You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift of eternal life, for the gift of knowing you, for the gift of faith to believe in you, Lord. You are the author and finisher of our faith. We bless you this morning, Lord. And we praise you for everything that you have done in our lives, are doing and will do. In Jesus' name, everybody say praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Lord. Give him a hand this morning. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Tim, as always. Great job. Appreciate you opening and sharing what the Lord has put on your heart. Praise God. And uh, all of you, we appreciate you uh, sharing your testimonies and prayer requests. Praise the Lord. And thank you, Suzanne, Mike, and Jody for leading us in worship. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. I want to thank everybody for joining us on uh, faith. I just, got, I just want to be thankful this morning. Praise the Lord. Thank you, everybody that's on uh, joining us on Facebook and live streaming, however you are doing it. Praise the Lord. We appreciate you being a part of the service this morning and uh, joining with us in worship of the Lord and just celebrating His goodness. Hallelujah. Yes. He is a great and a mighty God. Amen. Praise the Lord. You guys are going, taking a little vacation. Amen. And that's great. You know, uh, I learned several years back, you know, you, you, you know what an adventure is? It's a poorly planned vacation. Praise the Lord. We've had a few of those. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So it's in the details. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I, I, I want to share some things with you this morning in, uh, in, a, in a different way. Uh, kind of different. Praise the Lord. And I think it, it doesn't hurt to do this. I mean, one of the reasons I think the Lord kind of puts some of this stuff on me is because he wants us to think differently. He wants us to be, sometimes we just need to be, kind of look at the same thing, but in a different way so that we will you know, more than just go, oh yeah, well, I've, I've heard that, you know, I know that, that's true. And it's not that we're being disrespectful or anything, it's just that when you hear something over and over and over, the, you know, the monotony of it or the uh, redundancy of it gets to the place where you just kind of, so much of it just goes right past you and you don't really embrace it and, and uh, take it seriously as we should. And, and uh, as Don and all of you guys have said this morning, there's, we're in a time now where it is literally, uh, you know, lead, follow, or get out of the way. You know, I mean, it, it, we're at a place where God's really serious about the truth of his word and how we apply it to our lives. And uh, so we need to take that seriously. And any way that we can do this, any way that we can come up with a way of looking at it differently, I don't mean to do this just to be confusing or weird. I, I, I want... I, this is how I want to study for myself because, you know, we've all been, we've been reading the Bible for years and years and years, and it can get to the place where you just kind of read it without, you know, honestly, you, they say you can't do two things at the same time, but I, can't, I can be thinking about something and reading, and all of a sudden I realize I just read a chapter and don't know what I read because my mind just keeps wanting to grab a hold of something else, and then I go back and start over again, try to, you know, discipline myself to shut down to one thing at a time so uh, with that in mind that's what I want to talk about this morning some things that uh, that are powerful first beginning with the fact that we are spirits we are spirits we just happen to have a body it's just the opposite of the, how we mostly live our lives and that's because we're in a world that is all physical driven and, uh, and I understand that, and I'm as guilty as anybody else is, but this, again, is what God is telling us here in these last days is, come on, be the spirit people that you are. Let's push the physical to the rear for a while and focus on the spirit side of us so that God can do what he wants to, because as has already been said, the body's limited. Now, here's the thing. One of the things I want to talk about this morning is not nearly as limited as we think it is because we always have a tendency to think of it to, just simply in terms of, of, of flesh. But it's also a, it's a vessel, it's a container of the Holy Spirit. It, it's a, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but it, it's, 
It's special too, if you're born again. If not, well, it's, it's just an earth suit, as they say. But it's far more than that. Jesus, the man, think of what he did. And he did this as a human being, filled with the Holy Spirit. He, he disappeared. He was in a crowd, and all of a sudden, he's not there anymore. He's someplace else. That, he didn't do that as God. Get this straight. And that means if He did that, we can do this stuff. We just are too focused on the flesh where He said, I'm only thinking about what my Father says. I'm only dwelling on what my, God, my, my, my Father does. I'm not focused on this thing. I'm not going to let it dictate to me what I am and what I can do. Amen? Whereas we have a tendency to let it pull us down to its level and say, well, I can't do that because, you know, this. Just like... Uh, Tim was talking about to some degree, well, I don't have this education or I don't have that or I don't have the physical ability or the, you know, the history of learning or whatever it might be. It doesn't make any difference. That's all bogus. That's just excuses. Yep. And God's wanting us to forget the excuses and start taking some chances, yep. start risking some things in the spirit. Amen. Yep. And so if I get really weird, you'll know why. I'm not trying to just be weird. I'm trying to be spiritual. Yep. And I don't always know how to do that, praise the Lord, because this thing wants to even tell us how to do that. Yep. Amen. And so we have to get a little quirky and a little, you know, off kilter in order to let God do some things in our lives. Because if you think about it, most of the time when, God, when you did something that turned out to be a, a real spiritual activity, it didn't feel all that comfortable when you started it. And you might have even thought at the time, this is, this is stupid. I don't know why I'm doing this. Well, it's because it doesn't fit into the physical realm. It doesn't fit into the natural way that people think and behave. Just as Megan was saying, yeah. naturally and normally, I don't know about anybody else, but when I'm shopping, I'm shopping. I, I, I don't really shop. I just go, I got a list. Yeah. And I don't care what it is. I'm not going just to look for stuff. I'm going to get what's on the list, and then I'm going to get out of there, and I'm not interested in, you know, rapping or talking to the meat manager or which Sally loves to do all that stuff I mean she'll tell, tell you know she wants to know when did the last uh, cow come in that you butchered or whatever I don't care just give me the it's red I'll eat it you know give it here so I mean but that's fine I mean that's just a difference in personalities but I'm saying God would like I'm sure at times and it isn't that I've never prayed for people. I have at High V and in Ankeny and old guy. I mean, I'm, there's been different times when I, the Spirit of God just moved on me and I knew it was God. But a lot of times I'm so, again, focused on what I'm doing that I'm not paying any attention to what God's wanting to do. And so we have to kind of re, rethink things. So let me begin with this. We're talking about the universe and uh, a lot of times we, I, I'll say the cosmos, and we, I think we have a tendency to think that they're the same thing. Well, in a way they are, but the cosmos really is a universe that is considered to be in harmony. It's, it's an orderly system, whereas the universe, well, we live in it, and we know that it's not always that orderly or harmonious. It can be pretty erratic, even uh, Mike talking about tsunamis and you know, hurricanes and storms and, you know, all the weird stuff that can happen in, within the universe. <clears throat> and, uh, but, a, but a cosmos is, it's just talking about things being in sync, you know, harmonious and, and orderly, right? So that's, I want to start with that, that and the fact that we are spirit beings first and foremost, okay? So now let's, uh, I got two or three scriptures here to, to begin with. So let's begin with uh, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. A couple of these are just so familiar because we've talked about them over and over. But in Genesis 1, 20, Genesis 127 is a key verse because God's telling us who and what we are. You're not just flesh and blood. You're not just people that were birthed from a human as a human, Right? We were created. He created us. Every human has been created in the image of God. Created he us, male and female. It would be nice for the world to get that. I just uh, saw a thing the other day. Uh, I wanted to tell the, I don't want to be rude and hateful, you know, but sometimes it's just sickening because it's just so overboard. You know, okay, if you've got an gender thing that's your business I guess you know just keep it keep it to yourself you know I don't run around talking about my whatever my issues are right so I just 
and I just I wanted to just say, man, you 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 look like Liberace without a piano. <laughs> and anybody that's old enough to know Liberace would know. <laughs> if not, you can watch Ed Sullivan on the Me Channel tonight. He's going to be on there, praise the Lord. But you got to know this guy was just about as great piano player. I mean, he was a great pianist. And I no question about that. But man, he had some issues. Praise the Lord. And yeah. without the piano, he would have been really. Yeah. It'd be hard to watch, praise the Lord. Yeah. Anyway, that was just for the people on Facebook. Uh, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Praise the Lord. So uh, chapter 2 and verse 7, still in Genesis. So we were created in the image and likeness of God. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So man existed, but he didn't live until God breathed his life into him. He was created in his image, but he was just an image, basically, until God breathed his life into him. Now, uh, of course, we know that all kind of went sideways because of the fall and listening and obeying Satan instead of God. But Jesus brought that all back. He reestablished the original condition of man because of the cross, because of the resurrection, right? We've been redeemed. What were we redeemed? We were redeemed back to the beginning, back to the garden, back to where we had fellowship with God, where we were one with God, where we, we were in his likeness and had his life yes. pulsing through our veins. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? And again, that's one of those scriptures we read it and, you know, we just read it and think, okay. But we are what houses God in this earth. We're God's dwelling place. Yes. Amen? Romans chapter 6 and verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God. Now, let's get this straight. First of all, he's not talking about drinking. He's not talking about smoking. He's not talking about cussing. All those things we know are, you know, can be bad in and of themselves if they're abused. Uh, and probably all of us have done it to some degree. But he's not talking, when he's talking about unrighteousness unto sin, he's talking about opposition to God. In other words, not being in agreement with God. Right. Coming short of what God's purpose is for us. So we've yielded our members as instruments of unrighteousness or our own want-tos and our own natural way of doing things, right? But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead or that are born again, that have God's life now in them. Amen. And your members, your body, as instruments of righteousness unto God. Instruments that will agree with God and produce what God created us for in the first place. Right. All right? So, we live in a physical universe. And in this universe, it's really a shadow of the real thing, the spiritual cosmos that I talked about in the beginning. Just like fallen man is not perfect like Jesus, the physical creation or the physical uh, universe is not perfect like the cosmos, like the spiritual cosmos. It's, it misses it. It isn't in harmony. It isn't in tune with God. It isn't flowing the way God wants it to flow. And sometimes our universe yep. does the same thing. It isn't in sync with God. It isn't in harmony with God. All right, so we're given the ability to manipulate the spiritual cosmos and to bring it to perfection. You say, what? No, that's why we're here. That's, what, that's the reason for us being here. We have that kind of authority. We have that kind of power. Now just stay with me and don't, don't just write me off here. I'm telling you, 
through physical action, through words, and through thought, we can perfect the spirit realm. We can bring it in sync to where it's supposed to be. Otherwise, there wouldn't be any reason for us to be here. God could just roll the whole thing up and moved on. We, we're living in the shadow of who and what we really are. We can't always understand what the purpose of our shadow actions, you might say. We can't always understand what it is. The physical things that we're doing are just shadows of the spiritual. And so we go through our life believing the shadows more than the reality that right. the shadows project. Right. Right. And I was talking Wednesday night, I was telling, uh, I think Mike and Suzanne, we were t just kind of jabbering between uh, every word that somebody else said on the screen, but I don't know how, to, how we got off into it. But it's like, have you, ever, have you ever, I get up early in the morning, so I see shadows all the time. I'm, I'll, I'll turn on the Christmas tree, praise the Lord, which has now become the St. Patrick's tree. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, that's what I'm saying. Life is strange. Anyway, so, and, uh, and usually there's, uh, you know, I'll, I'll turn the light on in the hallway because I have to adjust the heat or turn on the fireplace or whatever, depending on the temperature. So I'm seeing shadows. But I'll open the refrigerator to get cream or whatever I'm getting if I'm fixing coffee. And uh, I, was, I was saying, have you ever noticed how if somebody else was just looking at the shadow, they wouldn't know what in the world was going on, even though it's so obvious and simple of a task. I'm just opening the refrigerator door, reaching in and grabbing. Now, but think of it this way. Suppose, here we know we need calcium for strong bones, since we don't have Wonder Bread anymore. But you know what I'm saying. We, we know that calcium is something that we have to have. Of course, you get calcium from milk, from cream. And so, not that that's my motive for getting it, but I'm just saying, if, if we understand we need that for our well-being, we go to the refrigerator, get this thing that we need for our well-being. And I open the door and I get it out and I use it. But if somebody else were watching this, it would just look like, I'm talking about the shadow, it would look totally bizarre. They'd see this kind of long, dark thing kind of reaching out, and then they'd, when the door opens, everything gets distorted then. It doesn't look like a door opening. It looks like a kind of a triangle thing on the wall. You know what I'm saying? It just, everything gets twisted. And they would see that and they'd think, what the heck? What is this? And then he took something out of there and they don't know. You can't tell from the shadow if that's milk or if that's calcium. You know what I mean? If it's, if it's whatever. They're just seeing a really weird thing happening. Now think about it. But in, but in truth... I'm doing something that's beneficial. I'm getting some calcium for this. Mm -hmm. But nobody knows that but me. Right. Right. I'm saying this is how we look at our own lives as shadows. We don't understand half of what we're doing that is spirit. God is leading us by the spirit and we're doing things, but we're seeing the shadow and it does not make a lot of sense. It just looks like random kind of weird things going on and we don't know what it is. Right. That's kind of what I'm trying to talk about this morning is that there is a purpose. There is a real, a reality to what we're doing in our lives, even when we don't know what it is that we're doing. And part of the reason we don't know that is because we don't stay focused on who and what we really are. We're too busy just looking at the shadow or this thing instead of what we actually are. So if I haven't totally confused you yet, stay with me. I can do it yet. Praise the Lord. So we live in the shadows. And uh, we can't always understand the purpose of our shadow actions or the, or the words that we use. But here's the deal. They're crucial to our well-being and to the well-being of the cosmos itself. Think, listen, I'm telling you, God has given us such authority, yes. such a, 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 a impact and effect on things that we have no clue, we have no idea. If there's a reason for the 30 seconds or whatever, 60 seconds of tears in, in heaven, it would have to be, in my mind, all that we were capable of and didn't know. 
So, the impact that we can have on the universe, on the, I'll say cosmos, because I'm not talking about the random kind of dysfunctional thing. I'm talking about the one that's in harmony with God, the one that's operating the way it was created to be. Amen. Only our, only our real selves. See, it's crucial to, ha- to us, but only our real selves, our spiritual selves, can comprehend the meaning of, of what it is we're doing. So it would behoove us to understand our spiritual selves more than we understand our physical. I know all my physical likes and dislikes and, you know, want to's and don't want to's and all that, but I'm not always in tune with what the Spirit is wanting. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is if I was in tune, as in tune with my spirit man as I am with my natural man, I would have the, because what I'm doing as a, as a natural man, yes, I'm having an impact, but it's only in this chaotic universe. It's in the broken and disharmonious universe, rather than being effective in the harmony or in the cosmos is what I'm supposed to be. All right, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And what, in fact, one translation is a new creation. A new creature, old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. Now let me just, let me throw, and I'm not trying to make myself God or you God. I'm just saying we are God's offspring. We should understand and relate ourselves more closely with God than we do with fallen man. Another problem that we have. But think about it. I was in Christ before the foundation of the world. Yeah. I exist now. The Holy Spirit dwells within me. I will live for eternity. Yeah. I was, I am, and I will be. Yeah. I am the creation that God dwells in. I am a new creation. When I was recreated, when I was born again, God came to dwell in this creation. Each one of us are a separate entity in that sense. We are each one. But the question is, are we a a universe or a cosmos? And that's what much of the scripture is about, us yielding ourselves to God, being more receptive to God and less uh, relating to the earth or to the natural or to the universe. More related to the cosmos, less related to the universe. In other words, more in, in, in greater harmony and sync with God than we are with man. Because for me personally, and I think for most humans, we are more in sync with the world that we live in, even though we're not of this world. We're of the cosmos, we're of the harmonious world, but we are more comfortable, even though we don't like it, we're just more comfortable because we're more used to it, the natural, even with all of its dysfunction. Okay, so think, here, think about it this way. A builder asks an architect to design a building on paper, right? He does that before he calls the construction crew in to start building, right? And so the architect and the engineers, they construct the building using symbols and figures. They manipulate these on paper until they achieve this a satisfactory result, until they come up with a thing that they, they're, they're wanting to then build, right? And so then the builder translates these symbols and figures into actual physical entities. It's a, it's a lot easier to build by first using abstractions than by immediately attempting the physical construction without any symbolic or abstract construction. In other words, you don't just go out with a bunch of lumber and start throwing up a building. I've, I've done that with a doghouse and a couple of other things, and it looked just like what I had done. It was kind of like the... Adventure. <laughs> Poorly planned. Amen. But I'm saying that's, that's the reason we do those things. We are, what we need to understand is we are the symbols of the spiritual realm. This. And we can attain what is otherwise unattainable spiritual goals right here in the physical universe 
with our physical bodies. God's spirit in this body. This then is the role of the physical universe. It's the reason it exists. Spiritual entities are translated into corresponding physical entities. I'm not talking about Casper the ghost now. I'm talking about when a person is born again, they become a spiritual entity. Yes. Yes. People that are not born again are just physical entities. Yes. Right? And so we're playing the role of symbols that can be manipulated to attain results unattainable otherwise. Mm -hmm. right. In the spirit realm. See, we think we're thinking this, but that's not. You said it absolutely right. Mm -hmm. These results are then translated into the spiritual. We don't realize the impact that we have. We don't realize what God has done. Think about Jesus. He's this guy, but he's having an impact in the spirit realm. Yeah. Yeah. Principalities, powers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We can choose to be meaningful symbols forming meaningful equations rather than being empty, meaningless shapes moving chaotically yes. and going nowhere. Yes. Which is the world all around us. Yes. Every human that is not born again, that's all they're doing is they're just playing a part in the chaotic universe. So just just as the true essence of the universe is its spirituality, it has no other reason for being other than that. The true essence of a human is the spiritual entity of which he is merely an aspect or a shadow. Okay? The, the essence of the universe is its spirituality. It should be conformed to the cosmos, the spiritual world. Right? We're the same way. We are to be spirit beings, spiritual entities. But we live our lives like a reflection right. without ever totally developing the harmony with God, the connection with God, the connection with the cosmos that Jesus had, he was one with it. And that's why wherever he went, a storm comes out of the universe. He didn't go, oh my God, a storm. No, he said, be quiet. Get in sync. Get in harmony here. A tsunami. It's just a big wind with waves. Settle down. Calm down. The apostles... The disciples, the shadows, are freaking out. Yeah. Why? Because they're focused on the universe. Mm -hmm. They can't connect with the cosmos because they're seeing themselves as these weak, frail, you know. They look at Jesus and they go, we've never seen anybody like this. We've never seen anything like this before. Well, why doesn't the world say that about us? Come on. Because we're more like the disciples than we are like Jesus. And I'm not picking on people. I'm saying this is what we, we need to reevaluate. We need to think, this is not who I am. This is not what I am, not based on what God says. It's what I've accepted myself to be. That essence isn't merely a gift from God, folks. It is God. Genesis 2-7 again. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And he became a living soul. He became a God-man. The essence of the universe 
and all the life that's in it is one and is of God. Does It only exists because of God. Right. Everything. Right. Shakespeare had the... <laughs> y'all, I know you took this in English. Uh, even if you didn't like Shakespeare, you still have heard this one outside of English class. To be or not to be. Yeah. And I won't go on with the soliloquy. Uh, that's the question, you know, whether it's just nobler, to, so on and so forth. To be or not to be. Now I want to give you a Hebrew word. And it's called bitul. B-I-T-T-U-L would be the English spelling. And it is to be and not to be. And in the adjective form, description, uh, it would be uh, batel with an E rather than a U with the, between the T and the L. Something not there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This is where I start to get happy. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Our essence, the real us, hungers for this spiritual nutrition for the the bread of life for God right John 6 51 Jesus is saying that's what he's saying I'm the bread of life I'm the true bread from heaven anybody that eats my flesh anybody that eats me yeah. takes me in yeah. right I'm the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread he shall live forever he will have God life eternal life and the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So the actions that we choose as a result of our own free will, this is what he's talking about, are going to determine our spiritual progress. So I can't blame anybody but me for where I am spiritually. It's just like anything else, and it's based on the choices I make. The emphasis I put on certain parts of my life. Where my priorities are. Right. Hebrews 11.3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. <laughs> Through faith we understand. The worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen... We're not made of things which do appear. Now, Jody has talked about it many, many times, and rightfully so. Words, what we say, how important they are. And you, nothing is more important than the stuff that we're saying. If God could create a universe with words, and he tells us, through faith we understand worlds were framed by the word of God and he has given us his image, his likeness, his way of doing things. We ought to be really being careful about the words that we speak and we ought to be bold about using the word of God in every circumstance. Just like, just like physics tell us how to manipulate mathematical symbols in order to obtain truth of the physical universe... The Word of God and the Spirit of God tells us how to manipulate physical entities, ourselves, objects, actions, words, in order to manifest truths of the spiritual cosmos here and now. Yes. To affect that yes. and this. Yes. Now I'm going to do something you may think is a little weird, but it's just to get us out again to kind of twist things a little bit. Einstein had an equation, and we all are familiar with it, E equals MC squared, right? You pass these out, Toby. Or Jody, I don't care, either one's fine. I think there's enough there for everybody. So, <laughs> this. There's enough there for, for you, everybody to get one, I think. Yeah. 
This is just to get totally nuts, okay? So E equals mc squared. And that tells us that energy and matter are really two manifestations of the same thing. All right? E equals mc squared. E is energy, m is matter, and the multiplying factor is c squared, or times itself. So energy can be transformed into matter, and matter can be transformed into energy. In fact, small amounts of matter can be transformed into tremendous amounts of energy. The multiplying factor is C squared. And this is where C, in, in Einstein's uh, theory, C is the speed of light in a vacuum. Okay, so three times 10 to the eighth power, and I'm not gonna go through all of that. I, I just put those down there so you know I'm not making this up and anybody can go to the internet and find all the equations you want. You can find how to build an atomic bomb. Wow. <laughs> I'm serious. Not that I would know how, what to do or how to do it. I'm just saying the information is there if you want it. So that's, that's why I give it to you. So you know I'm not just making this stuff up. So it's the speed of light in a vacuum. So you go from, five, from three times uh, 10 to the eighth power uh, mat or, uh, 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 matter per second. So from five kilograms of mass, you get energy, five kilograms, three times 10 to the 18th, or to the eighth, uh, let, me, let me make sure I'm getting it right, matter. Three times 10 to the 18th power of matter per second. All right, and that's squared. And I, without going further into all of it, I've given you the equation. Now here's, here's what's powerful. The human body, if totally converted to energy, just a human being, the average human, would yield the equivalent of approximately 100,000 atom bombs of the type that destroyed Hiroshima or Hiroshima. That bomb was the equivalent of 120,000 tons of TNT. Now we're talking about the human body being so frail. But I'm telling you how God created this thing. I'm not talking about I'm going to run out here in the street and blow up Des Moines. I'm saying the potential because of the matter that I'm made up of has the capacity to do this. What God made me out of and breathed himself into is limitless. The highest density of energy found in the universe is the density of the energy locked in the form that we call matter. In fact, you could say matter is highly concentrated energy. That's all it is. Typically, religious people, people like even like ourselves, have a tendency to value matter less than energy, right? Or in other words, value the body less than the spirit. But in truth, the body is actually a kind of concentrated, condensed spirituality. It was created in the image of God. I, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. I know this is weird, but I'm feeling God. So the body has this tremendous potential. It can achieve tremendous spirituality. That's the point, right? Ephesians 1, 17 to 23. That's what Jesus proved. That's what Jesus was proving to us. What a human body can do if it's totally submitted to the energy of God. What this matter can do when given over to spiritual energy. Yes. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 
the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, yes. and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Now, I'm, just stop for a second. We read this stuff, and I know I do, and I'm thinking, yeah, he's really powerful, but I don't, I'm not comprehending anything about the power of God and the power that he has put in me. Not to any real level of, of, of understanding. I'm reading it, and it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's like a textbook. I need some application. I need to see some lab work. I need to see something where it's actually working, right? And that's what God created us for. We're the lab. We're the thing to make this thing come out. We're the, I, I had a science teacher. I'll never forget. He was a weirdo, but he, he was brilliant too, but in a weird way. And he used to he's teaching us vacuum. I can remember learning, uh, teaching us about vacuum. And he did it in the weirdest, sickest way, but it got my attention. He got a mouse and he put him in a vacuum chamber and he would pump all the air out of that chamber and that mouse would be as thin as paper. I mean, it just flattened it. And then he would pump the air back in it and he'd pump excess volumes into it. So the mouse would blow up and it would look like a, you know, like a beach ball practically. I mean, it would get huge. And then he would bring it back to normal. The, the, the funniest thing about it was when he brought it back to normal, he reached in and grabbed the mouse and the mouse bit him about eight times before he could get him out of the cage or out of the vacuum chamber and into the cage. It was hilarious. Roger Sandin was his name. It was a trip. But he did get me interested in some things that otherwise I wouldn't have paid a bit of attention to. That mouse really, that won me over. It won me over. <laughs> and anyway, the power I'm talking about that God has placed in us. And we read it and we do not comprehend. We're not, we're not comprehending what he's telling us to comprehend. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand. Somebody has talked about resurrection power. Is, is more powerful than all the atomic bombs you could come up with, as many as you could build. Resurrection power is greater than that. And we have resurrection power in us. So it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not an accident that we look at matter and what kind of, which is what we are made up of, that can create such energy. All God's got to do is just flip a little switch. And all of a sudden, this matter that is just walking around as 185 pounds or whatever it is, uh, at the moment, uh, becomes hundreds of thousands of tons yes. of energy yes. that can split the universe, yeah. Yeah. that can cause me to be here yes. and there, that cause me to travel faster than the speed of light. Yes. Yes. And I'm there. Yeah. Right? So, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills it all. Now, let me ask you something. Do you think the devil doesn't know anything about physics? He's been around a while. Do you imagine that he is scared spitless yes. Yes. with a P yes. if you ever find out your potential. Yes. If you ever learn what Jesus learned, and I'm not right. telling you to get the equations all down and learn that. I'm just telling you to start thinking yes. in, the, in, in the context of who and what you really yes. are. He would flee yes. because he knows all you got to do is and he's gone. All you got to do is speak a word. He's out of there. I'm not exaggerating when I'm saying this stuff. I'm telling you, not only science, not only, science, not only physics, I'm telling you biblical truth, theology, yes. at its most fundamental level Amen. that we never enter into. We, it's, it's become so fantasized and so unnatural that we think of it as like fairy tale stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we, that's why we're not operating in it. Right. 
And all I'm trying to do is look, let's look at it in a different way. Even if we don't, we don't have to understand all the math. We don't have to understand all the physics of it. We just got to do what he tells us to do. Right. Yes. You could set an, off an atomic bomb and blow up Canada. <laughs> what a thought. <laughs> you know what I mean? Without knowing anything but how to flip a switch right. or push a button. There's the switch. There's the button. All we got to do is connect them. Say what he says. Renew our minds to the word of God. And we have such humongous potential. Resurrection power. Atomic energy power. Amen? Of course, the body is still considered lower than the spirit. But that's because the body in it itself is not the goal. Instead, it's only the body's vast potential for spirituality that gives it value, that gives it merit, what it, what it can be, if, it's, if it understands, if it gets it, right? In other words, the body is the means. The spirit is the end. The body gives us legitimacy. The body gives us the right to function here in the spirit world, in, by the spirit. Yes. So it's not the end, it's, but it is the means, and there is tremendous power within it. Yes. When it's activated, when it's used in the way it's supposed to be used. I don't know that my faith, you know what I'm saying? Don't misunderstand me, I'm not contradicting God, but I'm saying I don't know that it's my faith as such, that when I reach out my hand and pray for somebody that heals them. It's what God put in me. It's the matter. It's the energy. But it's my faith in what God said that causes me to do it. You can look at that however you want to. I'm not trying to be blasphemous. I'm saying Jesus said, I just do what my father says. I only say what my father says. I'm not saying faith isn't what it takes. Faith comes by the word of God. But faith just causes me to act. If one human body, just think about it. If one human body contains enough concentrated energy to totally destroy the world, and it does because we know what just a a small portion of that that we have as matter in us was able to do to to Hiroshima and Nagasaki. If everything that was, were were thousands of times more, more matter, therefore more energy within us, it would wipe the world out. It just would. And so if only uh, one body, one human, contains enough of this concentrated energy to totally destroy the earth. And we've got science for that. It isn't just, I mean, not that we need science to validate the word of God, but I'm saying it doesn't really contradict it if you you read the science. It's in agreement with God's word. Then this body also contains sufficient spiritual energy to spiritually elevate the entire planet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't know if anybody else is thinking, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit all over me. I know God wants to do some stuff that we just have never been able to believe He could do through me. But each one of us has the potential in the way that we were created to do these things. But you gotta be born again in order to have the faith to actually activate them. But faith without works is dead. The entire Physical universe is a concentrated form of the spiritual cosmos. 
but the potential of each part of the universe can only be actualized through the human interaction with it. God didn't make us for the universe. He made the universe for us. And that's why I don't buy this crap about global warming or climate change. Man isn't screwing this up because God created us for this environment. The potential of each part of the universe can only be actualized through the human interaction with it. So if there's a problem, it's because we're not interacting with it as we were designed to. It isn't because of carbon monoxide. It isn't because of carbon dioxide. It isn't because of, you know, aerosol sprays ruining the, you know, the ozone or something or whatever other weirdo thing they're going to come up with tomorrow. When you disprove one, they'll just come back with a different one. So you can see faith, just think about this now. Faith in words, faith in prayer gives a whole new light to the reason for them. The reason for the faith, the reason for the words, and the reason for prayer. Because there's such tremendous power available when we understand it. Only by, only by being closely in touch with our spiritual nature, our real person, our true identity, can we appreciate the cosmic significance of the Word of God. Look, uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 18 through 20. You, you hear what I'm saying? Yep. See, until we get totally on board with who we are spiritually till we really begin to understand the spiritual nature and, and our true identity. We'll never understand the significance that the Word of God has in this world, in this universe. The Word of God is just words on a page until somebody with the Spirit of God yep. begins to speak them. Yeah. Come on. They don't happen just because they're there. They have to be internalized. They have to be released. They have to be, become part of us. Yes. And then released back out into the cosmos, back out into the universe. That's why we're here to change the world. He said unto them, I have beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And we've got people hiding, mm -hmm. afraid to say anything for fear they'll upset the devil. Mm -hmm. If they only knew mm -hmm. how freaked out he is whenever we pick this up and begin to speak it in faith. He has no power. The power he has is deception right. and lies yeah. and yes. ignorance. Rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In other words, yes. don't, don't get so excited about the power that you've got. Get excited because the reason you have that power is you are in God's family. Yes. You have been declared a child of God. Yes. That's to get excited about. The or, or, or the benef one of the benefits is that is you can set hell on fire. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in God's family tree. Hallelujah. Chapter 24 of Luke, verse 49. And behold, I send you the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Yeah. See, it's only, only by actually walking it out by faith or, you, in other words, performing it can we grow spiritually to the level where we are in touch with our spiritual nature. In other words, it's like 
a little kid walking. They, until they walk, they don't understand what, you know, what kind of, how the world gets smaller, yeah. how they have access to so much more, how they can do so much more. As long as they're crawling around or letting sister drag me, you know, yeah. it's cool, you know. Mm -hmm. But once I start walking, I start finding out, whoa, I can get in the refrigerator by myself. Yeah. You know, I can get in the toy box. I can get here. I can, I can get the cookies off the shelf. I can, you know what I'm saying? We, and that's what he's telling us. It isn't until we, we begin to walk this thing out by faith, until we really begin to operate by faith, that we come to understand and grow spiritually to the place where we are in touch with who we really are. I'm not... You know, I'm, I, I'm not this uh, innate object laying in a crib just peeing myself and uh, somebody dumping food in my mouth every no. few hours. No. I'm actually a, a living being person who has an impact on the world around me. I'm not yes. just a sponge to receive what is out there. Right. I actually, there's a reason for me receiving what I'm receiving and it's to have an impact on everything else. Yes. So it's not just, not only do we get the, in touch with our spiritual nature, but we also begin to understand what channels of communication exist for words rather than actions. What I can do with my words yes. that I can't do physically. Yes. And we've all experienced that. We've tried to fit. We, we've done the Abraham stuff. Right? Right? But if he would have just agreed with what God said instead of doing what his wife said, right. we would have a far less fractured universe today. Right. It would be closer to a cosmos. Yeah. In other words, what I'm saying is what language does the Spirit speak? And without going into all the properties of Adam's you know, one proton orbiting around an electron or two protons operating, you know, orbiting around, a, uh, it's different for every atom, all the protons, electrons, uh, all the possibilities that could be. Instead of going, trying to figure out all that, the letters of God's word are the basic particles of the spiritual cosmic language. Yes. So we, I, I gave you this big exaggerated uh, equation. The only reason for that is that's what this is. Yeah. Each letter, yeah. each word. Look at, let's look at this uh, Genesis 1, 1 through 7. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and so it was. Now we just say, okay, those are letters, and we've read words. But that's not how God sees it. Right. He sees it as, you could say, kind of the blueprint that I talked about early on with the fact that when you go to build a building or build a, whatever it is you're building, you want an architect or you want a blueprint or you want something mm -hmm. symbolically to give you the information that you need to do the physical act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right? And that each letter by itself has great significance because letters can be combined into words yes. and then words into sentences mm -hmm. and sentences into paragraphs and so on. So each combination of letters and words and paragraphs possesses a unique significance and great potency in the spirit realm. Now you can say, well, you're just blowing smoke here. You sound like a 
you're teaching an English class. No, I'm, I'm telling you, why else did he put it down in words? Why didn't he just download it into our spirit? Letters, words, sentences, paragraphs, chapters, books have power. They have meaning. They reveal things. They release things. They have significance. They have potency in the spirit realm. And we are constantly, think, just think about this. We're constantly bombarded by all types of radiation. The light from the sun, the stars, the rays of the sun cause us to tan, change the way you look. Others that we never feel or, or we never even notice. Cosmic rays, billions of neutrons passing through our bodies every single day that we don't even recognize or notice or feel. But it's happening all the time, constantly. Through the entire Earth, through their interstellar journey, they're only perceptible with precision equipment. We're constantly bombarded by some we aren't even aware of because we have no way of detecting them. And then think about the electromagnetic uh, waves, broadcasts, radios, television, all the time, satellite, whatever, right here on Earth. Similarly, the cosmos is full of spiritual radiation. Yeah. How, how do you think a prophet hears from God? There you go. He's picking up radiation. It isn't that God just spoke to that person. God spoke and that person received it. Yeah. And I'm not demeaning the prophet the position of the prophet. I'm just saying they have a gift. But that gift, Paul told us, I would that you all prophesy. I would that you all tuned in to what God is saying all the time. We're constantly bombarded with messages, with visions, but we can only receive them with the proper spiritual equipment. We think God woke me up and, and gave me a dream. Or, and he has. And God has. Or God has spoken to me in situations. And I go, wow, that was the Lord. And I think that was unique. Yeah. That he took this moment and he just kind of infiltrated my life and, and bombarded my mind and my spirit with his words. No, he's doing it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every moment. He's always speaking to us. And we have a problem giving him 20 minutes of prayer time. Oh, <laughs> I'm not being cruel. I'm talking to myself. I'm telling you, I've been living this. I was praying the other morning. I said, God, you know, I was thanking him because I, I try to get biblical. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I try not to ask him for anything until I'm sure to let him know how much I appreciate what he's done. But it can almost become <coughs> rote, you know. And I said, Lord, I want to hear from you. Now, I'm being serious now. And I said, Lord, I want ears to hear and eyes to see what the Spirit is saying. He said, open them. He didn't say, okay, Nate, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a dream tonight. I, or, Nathan, tomorrow I'm going to give you a vision. No, he said, I'm, I'm just, how about listen? Because I'm talking all the time. And how many know two people talking, nothing gets said? Praise God. Romans 8, chapter 4 through 11. Praise God. Romans 8, 4 through 11. 
that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, spiritual death. To, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Mm -hmm. Because the carnal mind is at odds with God. It, it's against God. Because it's not subject to the word of God. Right. Neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Right. Now, I'll just say, I'm going to just throw this in there. But how did God raise dead bodies? By the spirit. Right. So though our body may be spiritually dead, it can be resurrected here and now. He said he can quicken our mortal bodies right now. He's not talking about in the rapture or after we're dead. He's talking about here and now. They can become spiritual vessels. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your carnal body, your mortal body, by his spirit that dwells in you. And this is everything I'm talking about this morning is right there in that Paragraph. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. Right. So by developing and, and refining and fine-tuning our spiritual focus and faculties, we can begin to discern spiritual radiation. Yes. And you can be walking in Walmart, or Target, or Hy-Vee, or Fairway, or wherever. And all of a sudden, okay, the Lord wanted me to pray for you. He said you're struggling with believing that God's going to heal you. And he's told me to tell you, you are healed. I don't know. You know, I'm just saying. It's out there. It's just a question of whether we're going to tune in the receivers right. and get it. Right. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, who empowers me. We can even become aware of our own constant emission of similar radiation. Come on. You think, nah, I'm, I'm being smart here. I don't mean to be. I think, because I'm praying in tongues, I'm releasing spiritual energy and vibes and power and anointing. And it is. It's speaking God's language. It's speaking secret words with only God understands. But how many of you know I'm releasing spiritual radiation every moment that I'm on this planet, sleeping and or awake? How do you think Peter's shadow, it wasn't Peter's shadow, it was just Peter and the emanation of the radiation of the spirit from his body because he was in tune. He was aware that not only was he a receiver, he was a transmitter. So we're doing it all the time, but God's wanting us to be aware of it. Yes. What our influence is. When I'm in a place, I'm affecting that place. Yes. When I'm with somebody, I'm affecting somebody. Yes. Yes. It's not, this is not egotistical. It's not... Look how spiritual I am. I'm telling you, this is us. This is what we were created for. And we've, as far as we have gone from religion, church, we're still religious. Yeah. 
we still got so much that we're focused on that has nothing to do with our existence. We'll even come to realize our thoughts, our emotions, our words, our prayers all radiate from us in every direction. Just like a broadcaster. We can tune in to all sorts of messages that other people aren't even aware of. But we can be tuned into them. Do, do words exist before they're spoken? Yeah. Because words are really, they come from emotions. They come from feelings. They come from uh, ideas. They're just not in word form yet until I speak them. But they're, they're there. So they exist and they don't exist. Praise the Lord. To be and not to be. Do I exist? Or don't I exist? Yes. I was crucified with Christ. I'm seated with him in heavenly places. I was buried with him. I was risen from him. I was in Christ before the foundation of the world. I was. I am. And I will be. Just depends on where I'm at. Spiritually speaking. My influence. We're going to tune ourselves to ourselves and to others to an extent that otherwise would be impossible. And I, this is the last scripture. It's rather lengthy, but I want to read it. Romans 8, 14 through 31. And I just like to look at some of these scriptures in a way that we don't normally think about them when we read them. So I'm giving you a lot of weird stuff here today so that when you do look at the scriptures, you think, well, maybe that is what he's... Maybe God was talking about something other than what I thought he was talking about. Or sometimes maybe he's talking about both. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waits, waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. The creation, the, the universe, the cosmos. And even the creature itself also shall be delivered from bondage. So the creature was made subject to vanity or to self-consciousness or self-awareness, not willingly, but by the reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole, gener uh, the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to it, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? For if we hope for what we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So we're content to just pray in tongues and let it go. That's not what he's telling us. He that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. If we're searching, if we're looking, if, we're, if we've got the receiver out there, 
He maketh, we make intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did not foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn born among many brethren. We don't need to be conformed to Jesus in heaven. We don't need miracles. We don't need signs and wonders. We don't need deliverance. We don't need setting captives free. We don't need fixing the earth. We don't need doing any of that. This is for now. This is for here and now. And our spirit man knows it. And that's why we groan and moan with our spiritual condition, knowing there's got to be more. There's just something in us. And it's that something in us is the God in us that's saying, you're, you're more than this. You're, you're, sat, you're, you're, you're being satisfied with so much less than what I've given you and, and, and the potential that I have determined for you. Built based on my blueprint. Quit just throwing up shacks because you got some lumber. Go according to the symbols. According to the equations. According to the plan. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Obviously, that's rhetorical. <laughs> Nobody. No, but they can, they can be not liking us, but they cannot be against us because they won't stand. They can't, they can't stand. They can't. Not if we know who we are. Right. We can develop this inherent potential by developing and fine-tuning our spirituality on our built-in transmitting transmitters and receivers, which is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But we gotta we gotta get a little Simon Peter in us yeah. and get out of the boat and take a chance and take some risks and right. huh? yeah. and quit looking at conditions to determine right. our capabilities and look at Jesus. Yes. That's the prototype. That's what you're capable of. That's what you can do. Created in the image of God. We're commanded to walk in the ways of God. In his likeness. Right? right. Yep. Now let me just, I'll just quit with this. He wouldn't command us to do it if it weren't possible for That's us right. to do it. That's right. He would never tell you to do something you can't do. Right. All things are possible. Yes. Nothing shall be impossible. I can do all things. I am more than a conqueror. Over and over and over, he's feeding us this truth. And we go, gee, that's nice. But you know, I got this bill. Or I got this thing. Or I got that thing. Or look at the world, the country, the state, the, you know. Let him look at us for a while. Let him deal with us for a change. And see what God will do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let, I just say, I'm just saying, let's be bold. Let's try some stuff we haven't done. Yes. Just because we haven't done it doesn't mean we can't do it. Right. It just means we haven't done it. Right. Praise the Lord. We can do all things. He's given us all things. Yes. So that we can do all things. Yes. Amen. So go in the power and the boldness of Jesus himself and see what God will do on your, our behalf. Praise the Lord. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless you.